哇！咁樣嘅喎條路，嚇！好優美喎，好似去咗英格蘭咁樣啊！好啦，老婆睇緊啲乜啊？呢個係太陽啊！我哋睇緊太陽。That's how the sun look like. 嗱，點解稀路嘅？To go out to the summit. What is coming to the net? Wow! How many cows? Look at that. 好多個鐵罐啊，好多有廁所啊點解卡入邊有雪嘅？咁勁嘅？誒、欸，你同我影個卡，卡子啊！哇，咁多雪嘅！可能攞啲 snow 嘅呢啲。This is where they hide it. Finished in 1992 and it cost about a hundred million dollars. Uh, it does have a twin, um, the one that's just down from us there, and that is the Keck 2 telescope. We are very creative in our naming. And that was a steal. It only cost about $80 million, and it was finished in 1996. So, um, did anyone notice anything when we walked into this room? Cold. Very cold. Why would we keep it cold in here? Any guesses? CCD. So uh, I heard a few different things. Uh, one of them was the CCD. We do actually cool the CCD additionally from this. That's a really good point. What were the other ones? Telescope are moving. <laughs> so don't let yourself get vertigo. They like to turn in an opposite direction. They are. They are moving, not us. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so they'll actually keep it cold in here, yes, so that we don't have any sort of breakage in the mirrors and things. We don't want that metal to expand and contract and warp the size and shape of what we're using. Also, um, they did some studies and they realized that one of the biggest causes of induced turbulence in the atmosphere was us opening up the dome and causing it by having a temperature difference in, inside and outside of the dome. So one of the main things they do now is they'll actually cool the dome to a few, de few degrees below the expected nighttime temperature to avoid this induced turbulence. So up here in Mauna Kea, we're already above 40% of the atmosphere, which already means we're looking through less turbulence. Pulls up, and that is the only part of the dome that is open to the nighttime sky. So this telescope here is an altitude azimuth telescope, meaning it can move up and down and left and right, and they'll actually keep them in line with each other so that the light comes in through the slit, 
and bounces off the primary mirror which is about to become visible to us on your right here. A lot of the other telescopes on this mountain, it's uh, actually a cascade of a bunch of different mirrors, 30 sec 36 hexagonal segments in total, and each of them are roughly 1.6 meters in diameter. You may be able to intuit part of the reason why we use segmented design, um, namely that it, it's revolutionized astronomy because um, as opposed to trying to take, for instance, a giant 10 meter telescope. Platforms, we can kind of see areas on the platforms way up top where they can divert this light to. It's kind of harder to see those now with the lights are that before there were these powder things, but it actually was sublimated gas. You could just spray it right on, and because it's a, it's a solidified gas, when it evaporates, it just takes all of that dust particles, all of the, the substance that's on it, and it just evaporates it off. So we don't have to touch it, we don't have to rub it, None of those things that actually... Yeah. 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 Sooner or later, I'm going to have to come up with a nice song and dance routine to justify the applause. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to see me doing that. <laughs> so anyway, welcome to Keck. Hopefully you enjoyed a little bit of a, a spin there. Uh, that was great. Yeah, every afternoon, what we do is... Uh, uh, during the morning hours, we usually check out instruments. And then in the afternoon hours, we uh, check out the telescope and dome systems. And what you saw there was just the very last uh, under software control computer checkout. So imagine this, one star, both telescopes pointed at the same star. That light comes and hits two different mirrors. Okay, so there's a parallactic factor there. That light is then sent downstairs through a set of mirror trains. Now, these are literally mirrors on movable mounts. Get off the telescope and go on Scottish. And that validated her mathematical model. And underground, underneath this area that we're here, is actually where that tunnel is. a lot like the ones in your digital cameras, um, except much, much bigger. So ones in cameras are maybe a centimeter square, very small. Um, that's actually pretty big for, you know, a digital camera. <laughs> but in, in our interferometer, the detector is about 18 inches by 18 inches. It's huge. Um, and that's down here in a room that is six. So you'll notice um, and that's actually what the car is named after, is the star cluster and this telescope as well. So there are two main astronomical influences that I know of in Japan. The rising sun, the symbol on the flag, and the Pleiades star cluster, Subaru. Yes, I have. Yes. Where are they going to put the new uh, 30 meter? Great question. All right, so the question is about the new 30 meter telescope. Where are they going to put it? Now, for those of you who haven't heard about the 30 meter telescope, it's going to be constructed a lot like Keck. It's going to be in segments. Um, so Keck has the 36 segments, and there are six different curvatures, so that's why they have the six different spares on hand at all times. The 30 meter telescope is going to be 492 segments that are 1.4 meters in diameter each, and they're going to have to have 36 spares on hand at a time because that's how many different curvatures are going to be represented there. It's actually going to go on the plateau just behind the Keck and Subaru telescope. So um, if you guys want to drive down this access road down here, you can drive behind the cabin and kind of see out of where it's going to be. The only thing is, please be very, very careful driving on that road. It's a five mile per hour speed limit over there for a reason. The sub millimeter telescopes down there can be very, very affected by the dust and it is a dirt road, so we don't want to kick up one. Oh, everyone see that little white dome all the way to the right? The one that looks like it's made fun of by all the other gnomes? Yeah, the rut. <laughs> that one's called Hoku Kea. Hoku meaning star, Kea meaning graduate telescope. And it was just upgraded from a 24 inch to a 36 inch telescope. The first light was officially last summer. However, there are a few things they gotta work out and they're hoping that at least by the beginning of next year they have it all ready for perfectly. Really excited to get out is that it is dedicated totally to the undergraduate. But notice how that dome is so much smaller than all the other domes up here. It's quite large. Um, it speaks to Holly a lot. So we're not that far away. Um, could almost swim there, I wouldn't try it, but uh, you're amazing. You're 
um, separated array. So they can get different kinds of information depending on what position those dishes are in. So the telescopes in an array, they work together. Hello, this is a big one. It's a big one. Radio Chong 一條條嘅唔知乜嘢，呢啲仲過癮啊，毛神神嘅，好似塊布咁嘅。